Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing yet another foundation first impressions. If you missed it, I just did a first impressions on the NARS light reflecting foundation that's brand new. But today we have another one, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. A lot of you guys requested me review this, so I did pick this up. So today we're gonna go ahead and do a demo, first impression, and then we're also gonna do a wear test. I'm gonna aim for about eight hours just to see how it holds up, see if it gets really oily or breaks apart. So we'll go over the product, demo it, and see what we think. So I will link this product down below. It is available now at pretty much every retailer. I will also link the other makeup that I wear in this video. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. And if you enjoy first impressions or foundation reviews, please give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So a little information about this foundation. It's called Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. It comes in a pump component. There are 30 shades. It retails for $44. So again, it does come in this sort of component with a pump. And I do believe that you can take the top off. Yeah, you can take the top off. So if you want to actually squeeze like every last bit out, you can do that. You do get one ounce, which is typical for any foundation, and this is made in Italy. So in terms of the shade, I picked up 6N. The last time I reviewed a foundation from Charlotte, I got 7N and I thought it was quite orange on me. It was just a little dark. So I think 6N will be the best bet for me. Now I've only applied moisturizer to my face. I think today what I'm gonna do is put a pore blurring primer on one side and then nothing on the other. So I think I actually want to use the new Jaclyn Cosmetics Blur Tint. I did a demo and first impressions on this yesterday and I'm still trying to figure this out and I wanna just use it on camera when I can. So I thought I would do it just on half of my face. That way I can see if it continues to blur under foundation, how it works with different formulas and then also putting nothing on this side to see really how the Charlotte Tilbury foundation performs by itself. So I zoomed in and we're gonna start on application. I will say my eyeliner was a struggle today. I feel like my lash is about to fall off. My eyeliner is wonky and shiny, so just ignore it because I honestly wanted to do a wear test and I was like, I don't have time to take this off. So for the primer, I'm gonna go in with the Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint from Jaclyn Cosmetics only on one side. If you didn't see my review, I will link it down below. It was just a first impressions, but this can basically be worn by itself or as a blurring primer. I messed up in that video and and thought that light was the deepest shade they sent me. I do have to say because the bottles are frosted, I think I just grabbed one and didn't even look at it. My mistake. So today I am gonna use the darker shade light medium. Hopefully that would match my chest more just to demo it. Now because I'm only putting it in my pore area, I'm gonna do about half a pump. I might even do a little less than that because I'm really using it as a primer today. So this is the shade Light Medium. And I just wanna see how this works under different foundations. And of course I want to continue to use products on camera as much as possible. So this is what the blurring tint looks like. As you can see, there's not like coverage, but it does just blur and soften everything. My pores look a lot more noticeable on this side. Now when I demoed this in my video yesterday, I used a lot more product because I was intending to use it just alone, but because the shade was off, I ended up having to use a skin tint. So you can see it just kind of evened everything out very slightly, but it doesn't have like coverage. So now I wanna go in to the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I think I'm gonna use a brush on one side, sponge on the other, and just see what we think. So I am gonna pump out, let's say two pumps, which looks like this. I feel like the shade is gonna be good because it actually does look neutral and not orange. Now you can see the texture is a little bit runny, but it's nothing crazy. So I'm going to start applying. I'm just using an e.l.f. brush. Okay, so I zoomed you in even more. So I would say the coverage upon first impression is on the lighter side of medium. It does say it's buildable. I mean, it is giving me coverage, but I can definitely see, you know, my skin peeking through. It's 
It's looking really nice. The problem with this though is stuff that is super hydrating usually wears really bad on me. So the wear test will be very helpful. So this is what one side is looking like. I do feel like it's very glowy. I can feel the skincare in it. It just has a little bit of that thicker texture that a lot of skincare-based uh, foundations do. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on the other side. The one thing I'm noticing is the pump is like not reliable, meaning that like I just pumped out two pumps and barely anything came out. Like it kind of squirts out. I just pumped out another. So it's one of those, I think you almost have to squeeze it while you pump it which can be a little annoying. I'm not really loving the packaging. I would have much rather had just like a standard pump foundation. So I'm going in now on this side with a beauty blender. And remember, we have no primer on this side. I have a feeling that my pores are gonna look worse on this side and also I'm gonna need a little bit more just because beauty blender will soak up some of the coverage. Also because this is a more hydrating foundation, I probably would prefer to use a brush. A brush just offers me more coverage and also probably less dew, which in turn would make the foundation wear better. So this is the foundation freshly applied. Keep in mind, I used a blurring primer on this side and a brush, and on this side, I used no primer and a sponge. Really application, I just had to use a little bit more for the sponge side because it did soak up. So for me, I probably would just use a brush. I would say this is leaning more dewy in my opinion than natural. I just feel like I look really, really glowy. For me, this is a little bit more than natural, but overall the coverage I would say is on the light side of medium up to medium. I don't know if you could get this to full, which I don't know if you'd want to just because it's so thick and hydrating. It definitely has that skincare feel to it. To me, it is very, very hydrating, like a little too much. I'm definitely gonna have to set this down with powder and I'm a little nervous how this is gonna wear. So I wanna go in with concealer. I'm just gonna use my ABH Magic Touch just because I wanna use something that has hydration. I'm Just gonna go ahead and blend it out with my sponge. So concealer blended out just fine. I'm feeling so incredibly dewy, it's actually unreal. This is reminding me of a lighter version of the LYS foundation, which I know a lot of people like and I actually didn't like it. It just was so heavy on my pores. It does feel a little bit less thick and sticky, but I'm getting that same vibe of extremely, extremely hydrating. Okay, so I definitely have to set this down. I'm gonna go in with my Huda Beauty in Pound Cake. Just in my T-zone, I wanna see how this sets with my go-to powder. So I'm just pressing into the skin. And I like to pull this down. So you can just see how much that powder smooths. It's just one of my favorites. So to set the outside of my face, I'm gonna be using the Dior Powder No Powder. I'm also gonna use my Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff. This is just a really nice duo when I wanna set products that are extremely hydrating and they have you know, a tendency to lift. I'm not one of those people usually that can take a brush and just like swirl powder all over my face. Especially with hydrating products, they will immediately just patch and lift. So I really need to be careful and use a pressing motion with a powder that is, you know, compatible with heavier cream products. Okay, so here's the foundation set with powder. I do feel like it set really well. I didn't notice a ton of lifting or patching as I mentioned before. That can definitely happen with certain foundations on me, but it didn't. It looks nice and smooth on me. I feel like it took the shine down. Now the question is, will the shine come back and will it come back in like an hour or six hours? We'll have to see. In terms of comparing, I definitely think that I look a little bit more smooth on the side with the primer, you guys can let me know. Of course, we will see how that goes throughout the day, but I'm going to quickly jump off camera, just finish off the rest of my makeup, and then we'll get my initial thoughts before we go into the wear test. 
All right guys, so I finished my makeup off camera. I will link all the products that I used down below, but everything seemed to blend beautifully. I feel like my skin looks nice and healthy. I'm very happy with the shade that I chose. I feel like it is a great neutral shade and it matches well with my just self tan or any kind of foundations that I bring down on my chest. I think that the coverage was about a medium. You could definitely get a high medium if you build it, but initially it was more like a light medium or on the lower end of medium. Definitely looked very hydrating, but once I set it down, seemed to set down nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and just go about my day. I'm not doing anything crazy because we have snow outside and it's freezing. So I'll just be in the house editing and doing things like that. So I'll go ahead and check back in here in a few hours. I'm aiming to hit about four hours, see if we're getting oily and see how the foundation is holding up. So I'm just going to go on with my day and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, hello there. I am back for my first check-in. It is about one o'clock, so it's been roughly four hours. A couple things I'm noticing is that I feel like it oxidized a little bit. Not necessarily in an orange manner, just I feel like I look a little bit tan all over, a little bit tanner than I typically do. I don't know if it's just, you know, my mind playing tricks on me because it's been a morning. You guys can let me know, but I do feel like overall I'm looking quite tan. The second thing is heavy around the pore area. This is typical for me. I am getting a little bit of oil coming through. Nothing crazy. Crazy, but that is always going to make this area stand out. So I would probably powder it and see if that would help it out. But I do want to just hold off and just let it run its course so that I can see how it would wear if I didn't powder it. I'll powder it at the last check-in after we do the check-in. I am noticing a little bit of wear around my chin area and around my jaw. I'm wondering if it's just from touching my face. I'm not somebody that like sits like this or, you know, I haven't been like laying down or anything like that. So this is just like normal everyday stuff. But I'm just noticing like a little bit on my chin area and back here. Everywhere else, I'm not noticing anything. You know, my blush and my bronzer and everything looks good. I just feel like I'm looking a little bit oily, which is to be expected because I do have combo skin. So as of right now, it's wearing decently. I'm actually surprised that I'm not oilier at this point. Point, but the next few hours, you know, it could take a hard left. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm going to continue on with my day and I'm just going to hope that my internet comes back on so I can upload this video tonight uh, and I'll see you guys in a few hours. All right, guys, I'm back for my final check-in. It is now 5.30, so a little over eight hours, about eight and a half hours. I want to get this wrapped up because I am just going to go ahead and put this clip at the end of my video and upload it hopefully within the next half an hour or hour. So I want to give you my thoughts on how my face is looking. I feel like really nothing has changed other than I've gotten more shiny. I'm not noticing much wear other than again just around my mouth a little bit and right here on my jawline but it's very subtle so I feel like it's one of those things that could be just from talking on the phone or just maybe touching my face. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Haley's Beauty powder on one side and I just want to see if this will revive the foundation. I like to do that often because this is what I would do if I were out and I really needed this to last me. So using a little bit of powder like that is how I would revive this foundation. This is one of those that for me personally, being combo skin, I would use a mattifying primer in my T-zone or I would just have to powder my skin, I would say every four hours or so. A little bit more high maintenance than I like. I typically do like a matte foundation because I don't get oily at all. But I actually like how this one wore, other than the oiliness in my T-zone. I like the way that it looks even after eight hours. I feel like it still looks like all of my makeup is intact. I don't feel like I look blotchy or having any separation. Again, I have a little bit of wear on my chin area, so that would be something that I could counteract by using the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray or, again, a mattifying primer. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Haley's powder on the other side just so that I don't look crazy. So this is what it looks like after powdering it, which is what I would do if I were to wear it for a longer period of time. I do still feel like I look very healthy and glowy. Even with the powder on, I can still see just a radiance. So other than a little bit of wear on my chin, I feel like the only thing you're going to get with this is a little bit of oil in your T-zone if you're prone to that. So maybe try a mattifying primer, maybe mix it with a matte foundation, which is what I will probably do, or use a mattifying setting spray to sort of play around 
around and see what works for you. I actually like this though. I have to say I like this more than the NARS one I just tried. It could be the shade too because I really like the shade that I chose for this. It's not too warm or orange, but it does make me look tan and glowy, which I like. So overall, quite impressed with the wear on this foundation. Excited to try it more and just try it with different products like a matte primer, a setting spray, or even just adding in a little bit of a matte foundation, which is my personal favorite. So let me know what you guys thought about this foundation and how it applied, how it wore down below in my description box. I will continue to test it out, but I wanted to get this video up for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoy these first impressions videos, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I will link all the products that I talked about today down below and everything I'm wearing as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.